new democratic partnership, and it is a partnership between two old foes, the United States and Russia. This partnership has a $1.6 billion price tag, which will go to Russia in the form of a huge foreign aid package. Presidents Clinton and Yeltsin left Vancouver tonight after the two-day summit. Mr. Clinton returned to Washington. Mr. Yeltsin headed back to Moscow, where he faces a tough political challenge, which he hopes will be a little bit easier to face with this new aid package. <laughs> Both leaders found time for a little campaigning today. At that point, the $1.6 billion aid package was a done deal. Good for President Yeltsin, because the money will help him foster economic and political reforms, and a bonus for President Clinton, because the money was already set aside during the Bush administration. That means no fight in Congress and the possibility of quick action. They can provide immediate and tangible results for the Russian people. We will invest in the growth of Russia's private sector through two funds to accelerate privatization and to lend to new, small, private businesses. The aid plan to Russia includes $700 million in agriculture credit that will allow Russians to buy grain and other commodities. $690 million will be given in direct grants, in addition to $230 million in other aid. Of that, $215 million is earmarked for dismantling Russia's nuclear arsenal. President Yeltsin defended the package, declaring that what's good for a democratic Russia is good for America. We need this kind of support, not aid, I would stress, not even assistance, but support, because in supplying food, technologies, goods, etc., etc., you do create additional workplaces, additional jobs in the United States of America. So these are not Christmas presents. And President Yeltsin may get another boost before the April 25th referendum on his leadership in Russia. Officials from the seven industrialized nations will meet in Tokyo on April the 14th to discuss a possible multi-billion dollar aid package for Russia and the former Soviet republics. Sarah? Presidents Clinton and Yeltsin are hoping for a democratic Russia. Dr. Martin Luther King hoped for racial equality. Dr. King and his dream are being remembered tonight on the 20th anniversary, 25th anniversary of his assassination. Memphis marked the day with a concert where the civil rights leader delivered his last speech. Later, the Reverend Jesse Jackson led a candlelight vigil where King was slain. Earlier in the day, Jackson was in Los Angeles, the site of last year's deadly racial violence following the Rodney King verdict. He took part in a King rally and Unity Fest there. Coretta Scott King marked the day with a wreath-laying ceremony in Atlanta. And Dr. King was remembered here in New York as well. Jada Dapper has the story. It seemed that not a single politician let this day pass without a public word about Martin Luther King. And tonight, at an awards banquet held in King's honor, award recipient Al Sharpton was no exception. He would not be somewhere non-threatening. He would be where he was when he was here. He'd be calling names. He'd be leading issues. He probably would have been next to Charles and I in the Brooklyn House of Detention. <laughs> Earlier in the day, Mayor David Dinkins and Congressman Charles Rangel led several thousand people on a five-block march up 2nd Avenue, a short walk long on symbols. The most significant, a chance for kids to trade in toy guns for books and apples, the so-called King Exchange, seeking to bring MLK's message of nonviolence to bear on a youth culture steeped in the use of deadly force. Gabrielle Yates came with her two-year-old Christian. A young children watch enough TV and enough violence, and every time they turn on the TV, there's something with guns or shooting, and if, if that's all they see, that's, you know, that's all they're going to know. Indeed, the lessons of the street made the King Exchange quite practical for some kids. In certain times, it's not good to play with toy guns, like out in the streets, because cops might take it the wrong way. So in the shadow of a stage crowded with politicians making speeches about a man now gone a quarter century, children tossed plastic guns into metal bins in honor of a man they only know in flickering black and white. It's better than being home, playing with videos. It's better than, you know, it's, it's a step. It may be a small step, but it's a step. Turning in toy guns is just a little thing, but the people here today believe that if enough little things are done, maybe the big things will take care of themselves. On the east side, Jenny Dapper, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. 
And in other news tonight, a 19-year-old man is under arrest after allegedly shooting a carjacking victim in the face during a wild chase on the Upper East Side. Police say that it all started last night when Charles Sanders allegedly tried to rob a cab. He ran away, shooting at police who were chasing him. At 64th and Lexington, Sanders allegedly carjacked a station wagon, shooting the 36-year-old driver from Queens in the jaw. Saunders sped away but crashed into a parked Jaguar at 80th and Lex. Police arrested him a few blocks away. Saunders was charged with attempted murder and robbery. The carjacking victim is hospitalized in serious condition tonight. Police think they found the man tonight responsible for starting a Bronx fire that injured 25 firefighters and left three families homeless. Investigators say Miguel Salgado set fire to his own apartment after he had a fight with his roommate. The fire, which gutted the top floor of the building in the high bridge section of the Bronx, started early this morning and quickly went to three alarms. Salgado has been charged tonight with arson. Harry. In Waco, Texas tonight, there is some new hope that the cult standoff there will come to an end soon. Lawyers for David Koresh met with the cult leader for six hours today. They say that Koresh is ready to end the standoff, but he first wants to celebrate Passover, the cult's highest holy day. Also, for the first time in two weeks, another man left the compound. He was later taken to a local jail. The standoff right now is in its sixth week. Well, when we come back tonight, Jews around the world get ready to observe Passover. But at many temples in New York, the holiday has been ruined by the theft of very valuable and holy Torahs. That story is coming up next. For Christians around the world today, marks the start of a holy season as well. And all eyes look to the Pope on this Palm Sunday. Wake up. Looking for an apartment. Have you been told it's just been rented? Or are you sure you can afford this neighborhood? Or other comments meant to put you off? you may be facing discrimination. If you think you may be meeting with discrimination in your search for housing, call the Open Housing Center. We help people of color claim their rights to live where they choose according to their means. Call us Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 at 212-941-6101. Tonight, Christians around the world are beginning the most solemn week of their religious calendar. Holy Week starts with Palm Sunday and ends with Easter next Sunday. Twenty thousand people filled St. Peter's Square at the Vatican to hear Pope John Paul celebrate Palm Sunday Mass. The pontiff dedicated it to young people and urged them to join him in Denver this summer for World Youth Day. Harry. For Jews, tomorrow night the celebration of Passover begins. It is a celebration of the struggle for freedom of the Jewish people. The coincidence of this holiday with the anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King's death had some real significance for a black congregation and a Jewish congrega congregation in Queens. Today, members of the Springfield Gardens Methodist Church shared a model Passover Seder with Rabbi Paula Winnig and the congregation of Temple Shalom. With the celebration of Passover, the loss of a key part of the Jewish religion is especially painful. Hand-inscribed scrolls known as Torahs have been stolen from a number of temples, and Jewish leaders are worried they may be facing a new crime wave. The story from Celeste Ford. The Torah lies at the heart of the Jewish faith. Only human life is considered more sacred. This explains why Jews are horrified by the theft of eight Torahs in six months. Among the targets, a synagogue at the Jewish center on the west side, another at Mount Sinai Hospital, and most recently, Congregation or Zerua at the 92nd Street Y. The rabbi says many members will be in for a shock this Passover. Some of our people have not been in the synagogue in a while, and you know they come for the holiday, and they're used to seeing the full complement of Torahs there. You open it up, and you know that there's been a terrible thing that has happened. On March 1st, two Torahs were discovered stolen from the Ark. The thieves missed the third one, a scroll carefully handwritten on parchment 75 years ago in Russia. Like the other two, it's worth about $8,000. In 1981, more than 200 Torahs were stolen from synagogues around the country. Unscrupulous dealers then sold them to unsuspecting synagogues. The police came to the Jewish Community Relations Council and said, we have a problem. All the Torahs look alike, and even if we recover them, 
we really wouldn't be able to prosecute anyone and return the Taurus. Jewish leaders broke the ring by applying an invisible serial number to each Torah and tying the information to a registry. But now authorities fear a new ring has surfaced. There's a cruel irony here for Congregation or Zerua. It was founded four years ago by Jews who felt the public reading of the Torah had been neglected. Members are encouraged to take part in the study of the sacred text, provided it's not stolen. On the Upper East Side, Celeste Ford, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Well, the New York Rangers are keeping their playoff hopes alive, and Mark Stevens has a story coming up next in sports. And the Knicks go down to Mr. Robinson's neighborhood to take on the San Antonio Spurs. And later on, a behind-the-scenes peek at the filming of a movie on the World Trade Center bombing. And sizes. Knicks tonight, a big one in overtime at San Antonio. It's their sixth straight, and this one was a game of streaks all the way. First the Coyote going one way, then the Knicks the other. Move the ball around, down low to Charles Smith. Knicks by 13 at the half, but San Antonio flies back into it. Sean Elliott drives the lane, spurs on top midway through the third, and then it's the Knicks' turn. The takeaway from David Robinson. Starks for Doc Rivers and the jam. Doc, a season high 24, it was tied after three when it appeared the Spurs took control. Watch David Robinson pass Ewing. It'll drop. Knicks were down five, but they tie it and have a chance to win it at the end of regulation. But Patrick can't get it to drop. 94 all, and they'll go to overtime. Where John Starks had six of his 21, the three ball there, and add to that tremendous defense. Like Doc Rivers with the takeaway here to put it away. One away to 105 final. Knicks overtime winners down in San Antonio. Now the Nets let Lenny Wilkins' Cavs off the hook in Cleveland. They had lost three straight. Looked like four the way Derek Coleman and the Nets got started. D.C. had 30. Nets were up six at the half. Cavs run them out after that. Mark Price. With the bucket there, he had 27. Then it's Price, the passer to Darty. Nets lose their sixth in a row on the road, 105 to 95. Hockey now, and the Rangers show a flicker of life. They're not dead yet. Pitch a shutout at Washington this afternoon and show they're not going down without a fight. But you know, when does Joey Coaster ever need an excuse to use his fists? First period was the story of this one. Adam Graves will take the loose puck, spin around, and fire his 33rd goal of the year, and the Blue Shirts had the lead by one. And they add two more in the period. Next, Mark Messier from Mike Gartner, his 44th. All that was more than enough for John Van Beesbrook. Stopped all 24 shots that came his way. Fourth shutout of the season for the Beezer. 4-0. Rangers snapped their four-game losing streak, and they're back within a point of the aisles for the last playoff spot. Now the Penguins and Mario Lemieux at the Meadowlands tonight didn't get much respect from the Devil fan with the hand. Didn't disturb the champs, though, especially Ron Francis with the two-man advantage. Francis' second goal of the night. Penguins win their 14th straight. That's one short of the Islanders' league record back in 1982. Well, from here on out, all the baseball games count. The Mets host the first ever Colorado Rockies game tomorrow at Shea Yankees. They start in Cleveland, but first they wrapped up the exhibition season against each other, with the Mets completing a sweep of this year's Mayor's Challenge, where Mayor Dinkins was in his Yankee duds today, since they were at Yankee Stadium. Following up Frank Tanana's good pitch, and Pete Shorek took a 1-0 Mets lead to the fifth, and it was gone when Randy Velarde blooped this one to right, scored Wade Boggs, that tied it, and then the Yanks took the lead. Then in the sixth, the Mets scored five times. Vince Coleman's fourth hit of the game gave him the lead at 3-2. to two. Bobby Bonilla followed it up with his second hit of the day. That'll score a couple more. Mets win it 7-2, to two, sweep the Mayor's Challenge, and after a weekend of Mets-Yankees, look what the fans are dreaming of. Subway Series? Well, hope Back springs again. eternal. And with tomorrow's openers, both teams made difficult final roster decisions tonight. Yankees demote Hensley Mullins, Gerald Williams, and Andy Stankiewicz to Columbus. The Mets send down pitchers Mark Dewey and Eric Hillman, and they disable Darren Reed. And this is Met manager Jeff Torborg giving bad news to Paul Gibson this morning. Gibson was released. It means utility infielder Tim Bogar made the team. But the Mets won't have all their weapons for the opener. Remember this sight from yesterday? Center fielder Ryan Thompson pulling up lame. He didn't even make the trip for today's game in the Bronx. He stayed behind at Shea for treatment on his left hamstring. Is it safe to say that, that Ryan's not going to play on opening day? Yeah, I'm not going to play him tomorrow. I mean, he wants to play so badly, but I, I can't take that chance. I don't want to blow a kid out for three weeks to a month or maybe more 
trying to get him in opening day. That makes no sense. It doesn't. Well, the same day baseball season ends, the college basketball season will come to a close. That's when baseball season starts. Michigan and North Carolina will play for the national title tomorrow night. And just like Chris Webber and Jamal Mashburn was the semifinal individual matchup to talk about, this time Michigan's Chris Webber figures to go head-to-head -head down low with Carolina's big guy, Eric Montross. As you might expect, the matchup is being downplayed by those big folk. Uh, the determination is to do that as a team and to play well as a team, and it's not an individual matchup by any means. But Chris Weber and uh, Eric Montrose isn't the key to the winning. It's the coaching and it's the overall team effort. So we're not going to make this like a Chris Weber, Jamal, Mashburn type thing. You know, it's not Larry Bird and Magic. It's just two college players. As for the ladies, they decided their title this afternoon and an apology. At 6 o'clock tonight, I gave you the score backwards. We crowned the wrong national champ. I apologize. Didn't mean to take anything away from Cheryl Swoops, who sure did it for Texas Tech. Scored a record 47 points for the Lady Red Raiders against Ohio State. She's the reason Texas Tech wins its first national championship in any women's or men's sport. In golf, the Masters just a week away. The warm-up this week in New Orleans. And Mike Stanley shot a 5-under 67 in the final round, tapped in here on 18. He finished at 7-under for the tourney and then had to wait as Payne Stewart had a chance to tie him with this long birdie putt, and it falls short. Stewart is heartbroken, so Mike Stanley wins his first career tourney and he automatically qualifies for next week's Masters. In the seniors tradition, Mike Hill needed this birdie on 18 to win it. He got it, won the tradition by a stroke. And finally, a championship of a different kind, pond skiing at Bear Mountain, California. That's how you're supposed to do it. This is not. He's got that uh, sinking <laughs> feeling. He should have worn uh, the life jacket. That's how they do things in California. And that'll do it in sports. I'm Mark Stevens. I didn't know that was coming. You gotta yeah. keep the speed up. You the know? California it's... native didn't like that. Uh, no. I, I liked yeah. it. I thought it was very entertaining. Well, you okay. are going to like the AccuWeather forecast. And meteorologist Veronica Johnson will be uh, coming up next, and she'll have the details. And no doubt people in northern New Jersey will like it as well. They're still trying to dry out from last week's flooding. Stay with us. Petland Discounts. On Petland we care. I'm Neil Patrick, president. Tropical fish are fun, beautiful, and easy to own. You'll have crystal clear aquarium water and healthier tropical fish with Second Nature's Whisper Power Filters. It's easy to maintain any size aquarium with Whisper's Quick Change Cartridge. Ask for Whisper at Petland Discounts. On Petland we care. Now over 90 convenient locations, all open every day. Wake up, call 540-WAKE. Get out of bed and get ahead. Use your touchtone phone. Call 540-WAKE. We're the wake up that works. So why worry? Don't ever be late again. Call 540-WAKE. Do it now. Only $2 per call. Depend on us. Call 540-WAKE and wake up right. Wake up bright. Wake up to us tomorrow. Call 540-WAKE. Are you a homeowner? Are you thinking of buying a home? At First Funding, we do nothing but mortgages. First Funding gets the lowest possible rates to save you money. Need a fast mortgage loan? Think of First Funding. We're located at 1500 Flatbush Avenue, Brooklyn. Call us at 718-434-2000. Leave it to mortgage broker number one, First Funding. Let's do a comparison. Six Flags Great Adventure and Disneyland. Both have great family excitement, but only Six Flags has heart-pounding rides like the Scream Machine. Both have fantasy fun for kids and adults, but only Six Flags has the largest drive through safari outside of Africa. Both feature lots of great food and shows, but only Six Flags has the incredible new Batman The Ride. Plus, Roy Rogers presents fantastic savings on one-day adult admission. So if you can't make it to Disneyland this weekend, come to a theme park that's bigger than Disneyland that's right here at home. Six Flags Great Adventure. Coming up on the next Live, it's an odd couple reunion. No, not region me. It's Jack Klugman and Tony Randall together again on the next Live. Today at 9. Right here on Channel 7.
A flood watch remains in effect tonight for water drenched Wayne, New Jersey, but officials say most residents should be back in their homes sometime tomorrow. If you're not a resident of Wayne, the water levels may not look any different, but residents say with some hope that the water is much lower than it was last week when heavy rains and melting snow forced the evacuation of some 650 homes. Well, let's hope that the five-day AccuWeather forecast will allow people to dry out just a little bit. It's going to do exactly that. The clouds have been slow to clear out of the area, but nonetheless, they are clearing. Let's take a look at it now. Our temperature is holding now at 40 degrees. Notice humidity at 60 percent. Here's that mercury. It's rising through the area. High pressure moving into our area. What we have to contend with tonight are some winds. They're stiff out of the west at 10 miles per hour. We'll see them decreasing slightly as we roll into the morning hours. So radiational cooling will take over and our temperatures will drop into the 30s. Also making it feel more like 30 degrees on the skin currently. Only 46 degrees today. That's about 10 degrees below what our normal temperature is for this time of year. Across the viewing area tonight, we'll see temperatures predominantly in the 30 down to 36 degrees in the city. Some cooler temperatures being found across Sussex, Passaic, and even down into Warren, about 25 degrees here as well. And that's where some of the coolest of weather will stay tomorrow as well, only 49 degrees. Our range will be between 50 and 54 degrees. Let's take a look at the clouds in motion. Where's the storm system? Still watching two of them on the map. This one, a low pressure system producing even some snow and sleet across northern fringes of Arkansas. It will head eastward. It will stay to the south of us thanks to a high pressure system that will squash all the moisture south of our area. So what we'll have to contend with is mainly some east to northeasterly winds that will keep the cloud cover into our area. And then for the weekend, another system. This one is now moving into the west coast, producing some cool weather, some mountain snow and area showers as well. So for the rest of the evening, what we'll find is temperatures holding at about 54 degrees uh, tomorrow, that is with more sun than clouds around, but still some northwesterly breezes blowing into the area tonight and tomorrow morning. About 36 degrees is what the temperatures will be under those partly cloudy skies. Tomorrow will rise up to a glorious 54. Again, more sun than clouds in the offing. So the five day AccuWeather cast calls for temperatures to range between 52, 56 degrees or so with more sun than clouds. Oh, Thank good. You. Thanks. Well, finally, uh, the World Trade Center bombing is barely a month old, but Hollywood's already working on a made-for-TV movie. It's called Terror in the Tower, but this tower is not in Lower Manhattan. It's in Portland, Oregon. Filming is supposed to take just 19 days, and it's expected, the movie is expected to air later on this month. What would Hollywood do without news? That's right. <laughs> well, that's the news for us for right now. Thanks for being with us. Good night. Good night. The preceding edition of Eyewitness News was recorded for rebroadcast at this time. Gordon's Limousine Service has a reputation far beyond...